Is Daniel going to the dark side? Is Daniel leaving the, the police department for politics? Is he going to the dark side? Is he joining the mob, so to speak? Is he joining the Teamsters? Hey, everybody, welcome to the D. Louise book series. Please give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. If you're already a subscriber, thank you very much. And I need more subscribers. I need a lot more subscribers. But anyway, I'm kind of sad because I've reached the end of the series. Well, I'm sure it will continue. It's the current book. And that means I have to wait till next year for the next book. And that's kind of sad. I've been through it. Um, book 18, All That Is Hidden, Rice, Bowen, and Claire, a Molly Murphy mystery, and it was delicious. It was so, so good. You want to read it carefully and cautiously and savor every moment of it. It's so, so good. All right. So, just real quickly, a little teaser. I, I would never have paid attention to the small article in the Times if Daniel hadn't pointed it out to me. I wonder if my letter to my mother has been lost, he asked. Without much concern, listen to this as he read the item out loud. The paper didn't seem to know exactly how it happened. The passenger train heading out of New York City and into Westchester County brought the mail just like every other day of the year. Just like every day, the postman, having sorted the letters in the mail car, bundled them up into the heavy postal bag and lobbed it out onto the platform of Mount Vernon to be collected. But something must have been different that Friday. Perhaps the train was running slightly late or the postman had not quite finished sorting as they pulled into the station and rushed to get the postal bag off the train. However, it came about one strap of the bag caught below the wheel of the train as it pulled out into a cloud of stream. It dragged the bag a mile down the track until it broke and letters exploded. The rain of correspondence floated down the tracks contained the everyday doings of mothers and daughters, fathers and sons, deals to be made or broken every day, joys and disappointment. When the bag was discovered broken, the hunt was on to find the missing letters and restore them to their owners. Some lost forever or rendered illegible by the mud and mist of the night they spent outside, and most were found and sent on battered and dirty as they might have been. One found its way into the hands of the wrong person. I couldn't have guessed all of this as Daniel read the story in the Times, but it did catch my fancy. I amused myself by thinking of the letters floating about in a gust of wind. Since I didn't know a soul in Mount Vernon, I thought it could have nothing to do with me. But I was wrong. I was dead wrong. Okay. So, Ma Daniel has a surprise for Molly. And he won't tell her what it is. And he makes her get dressed. And they take the baby. And they go off someplace. And I'm like, uh, uh, what's going on? So Daniel has been asked to run for sheriff of the five boroughs. He is going on the Tammany Hall ticket. Molly is not happy about this. With the position comes a house on Fifth Avenue. Oh, wow. Ooh, Fifth Avenue. Ooh. Um, they get a housekeeper. They get a cook. They get an upstairs maid and a downstairs maid. Wow. They moved up in the world. Wow. And Molly's just like, huh? And the house has radiators. Wow. That's impressive. Um, Bertie is going to Briarwood School for Girls, the courtesy of Sid and Gus. And she's having a little hard time fitting in. She's really smart and she's doing well in the school. And some of the other girls are a little jealous of her. And then, of course, because she's of a lower standard than they are, they are not nice to her. So um, Daniel also gets a personal bodyguard to watch over him as he does stuff. Um, Daniel's new boss is Bill McCormick, 
and his wife Lucy, and they're invited to dinner uh, at the most expensive restaurant in Manhattan, Demonico's. And while they're at Demonico's, um, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, so there, they go to Demonico's, and Mr. McCormick's side piece shows up, and they're like, he's not very happy about it. No one's happy about it. And then Mr. O'Brien's second in command shows up, and he's not happy that Daniel was chosen to be second on the ticket. He feels that he should be second on the ticket. And then it's moving day, and Molly has arranged with Sid and Gus, um, their friend Ryan, Ryan O'Hare, who's the actor and playwright, um, he has a Russian ballet dancer in town who likes to stay privately. So he's going to be renting out Molly's house while Molly's on Fifth Avenue. And um, Molly also gets a bodyguard in Finn. Um, when they arrive at the house, everything has been put away for her like good servants should do. And Molly is just not happy. She feels like she's a prisoner in an elegant jail. It's just not working for her. Um, Mary the maid informs Molly that she has been in the house for the last year and um, the last resident was a male who was supposed to be the number two man on the ticket but um, because the Hearst family reporter whatever dug up stuff on him he had to run out of town, so he's now staying in Maine or Vermont. Um, so Birdie School has a outing and to the Statue of Liberty. And while they're on the ferry, uh, Birdie saves one of the lives of her classmate, who just happens to turn out to be Blanche, who happens to turn out to be Mr. McCormick's daughter. And they're all very grateful to Birdie for saving the daughter's life. And now Birdie and Blanche, Blanche who used to pick on Molly, are now best friends and they become like this, inseparable. They don't want to leave each other. Um, so she was gonna go, Molly was gonna go visit Sid and Gus and they come to her. And Molly is having issues with the cook She's an Italian lady, and apparently she only cooks pasta. And Molly's family is used to having a piece of meat, a uh, pot roast or pork chop or a small steak, and then fish on Fridays. And this lady is like, it's totally over her head. Um, Molly is also very worried that Daniel is getting mixed up with the politician. And Daniel keeps asking Molly to trust him. Um, Molly takes the Costanza, the cook, the Italian lady that only cooks pasta, and she's trying to teach her how to cook stew. And Bertie gets invited to Blanche's 13th birthday party. And Molly befriends William McCormick Jr. And um, a reporter gets found in the party. He had snuck in, and he gets thrown out. Um, Bill was talking to an older man about drawing up a rough draft and Bertie witnessed this. So they go to the study to draw up the draft. And when the father doesn't show up for cake cutting like he promised, they go looking for him and discover he's deceased. He um, was stabbed. And later it's discovered he was also poisoned. And the suspects are Con Cornelius, his younger son, William Jr., the older son, um, and the rest of the household, the wife, the daughter. But of course, the wife and the daughter were at the party. Um, and Jr., William Jr., is confined to a wheelchair, uh, but that will be subject, will come up again later. Um, and what they discovered was Bill was making, Bill Sr. was making a new will. Uh, so Daniel calls this, the commissioner to inform of all this and hopes to be able to go back to his job because the guy that is handling the case 
it is no good. It, he doesn't believe in fingerprints. He doesn't believe in preserving evidence. He's not very good at his job, and it's just frustrating Daniel all, whatever. But the commissioner convinc convinces Daniel to stay, to keep, keep it out a couple of more days. Um, they still haven't found all the evidence they were looking for. So, um, and then the commissioner brings William Hurst, the, the backer for all this, um, so that Molly meets him. And then uh, the reporter goes missing, so that's another thing. Um, they don't want to give Daniel his job back because he still has to finish the investigation. Uh, Mr. Hurst promises protection and a bonus at the end of this. Uh, Blanche comes to their house for lunch and tells about a fight she overheard between her brothers. Um, Finn is the bodyguard, and he's also the guy taking care of the financial issues for the house under Mr. McCormick. Um, and Daniel has, a he has a conversation with Daniel that he should, uh, oh, well, I guess since Mr. McCormick is dead, you'll be withdrawing. And Daniel's like, no, I'll be sticking it out because the commissioner told him, but he's not telling that. Um, Molly has an interesting conversation with Mary, the housekeeper, then heads over to Sid and Gus's and meets the Russian ballet guy. Um, then Bertie goes for a sleepover at the McCormick's at Blanche's, and Blanche's has given her some of her dresses. Um, and, you know, Molly feels kind of funny about this. Um, and then Mrs. McCormick tells Molly that she received a note from the uh, side piece um, telling her that her husband was going to divorce her and he was going to leave her for her. But we all know that's not true. But uh, because of the election and most men don't leave wives for chorus girls back in the day. Um, then Lucy tells or confesses to Molly that she confronted her husband. He said this was all false. Um, and then Molly says, you know, you could have just said if you wanted to leave me for the side piece, you're going to have to give me extra money. And if you don't give me extra money, we'll put this out in the papers. But um, she didn't because he was deceased by this point. Um, Daniel comes home and tells mommy the, Molly the contents of the new will. Apparently, when he went up to the study, he was filling out a new will. And um, it leaves Lucy the house and uh, Blanche and Tammany get rest of it. So there's some conflict there. Um, the sons had wanted to do stuff. Um, Daniel goes over to talk to the family and tells them the contents of the will to get their response. Um, Molly takes Liam to the park and witnesses Costanza the cook giving a basket of materials to a strange man. So then she later confronts, um, the house, the cook about it. And the cook knows some information, so she wants the cook to talk to Daniel about it. And then the guy that's incompetent in his position informs Daniel that not only was Mr. McCormick stabbed, but his autopsy, which Daniel encouraged him to do, even though he didn't want to do it, because in his opinion, the knife in the back was the cause of death, and that was it. They didn't need no autopsy, but Daniel insisted, and it turns out his body was full of morphine. And then William Jr. confesses that the morphine was his and um, somebody must have stolen it out of his room. So they check his room and yes, the bottle's there, but it's empty and they check for fingerprints and it's been wiped. And then uh, the Cornelius, the younger son, calls Daniel, but he's not home and leaves a message with Molly saying, um, I need to speak with Daniel immediately. So Ma when he comes home, after the funeral, Daniel's a little tired, but Molly makes him go to the house for the wake or whatever, the after funeral stuff, when everybody goes back to the house for coffee, cake, and stuff like that. And they find William, not William, Cornelius, uh, dying of a mo mo morphine overdose. And it all 
it's just you've got to read it it's um it's good it uh they're in the middle of confronting i won't um divulge the rest of this it's really good i have like 50 pages of notes here but you'll have to read and find out who else who the real killer is that's hiding in plain sight because at one point i thought maybe it was the side piece but she, um she was in theater at that time and uh you will have to see how molly works it out with the italian lady for cooking and how her relationship with Lucy continues and how Bertie and Blanche's relationship continues and who the real murderer is. And right in the middle of all the uh, confessing at the end, Daniel's mother shows up. <laughs> and there may be another surprise at the end of this book. And unfortunately, for those of us who were binge reading the entire series, like I was, and we've come to the end until next year, which is like, oh, I'm gonna run away. I want more. I want more now. Oh, because all the authors cannot be James Patterson and write them every month. But there's a surprise at the end of the book, and we'll have to wait till the next book to see what happens with that surprise. But at the end of the book, Molly gets to go home, and she's very happy to go home and be with Sid and Gus again. So... You'll have to read it to find out what's happened. It's so good. And, uh, hey, co-host. Hey. Come here. Come here. Come say goodbye. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, Casanova. You're a good boy. Yes, you are. Come here. Come on. Come here. Ow. Here we go. So... Please hit the like and subscribe and check out the book. All that is hidden. Bryce Bowen. Please hit the thumbs up. Let me know I'm doing a good job. It's just me reading books, talking books. That's it. And uh, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I took my extra time with this book because it was so good and I wanted it to last. And like I said, I took pounds of notes. <laughs> But please hit the like and subscribe, and please let me know I'm doing a good job. Thank you.